Mani Mahama and the NDC leadership are a very, very big mistake with the removal of Honorable Haruna Idrisu and Amun Taka Mubarak as uh, minority leaders and minority chief work simultaneously. Now, I didn't think there was an air cause mass disaffection for the NDC in the northern region. And Chedia and Antoqua is a CEO leadership now, Otimus, a party chairman, the party secretary, a big paper, a big cover police station. And the NDC continuously a Lusu majority of the youth. Now, Fedia Aquaqua affected the association of Zongo chiefs. And the imams who call in the northern region public leaders, public opinion shapers, we want to determine a hat me year for winning year for a genuine year, the winning year, the attorney winning year, the premier imams, senior warrior, senior Zongo chiefs, the imams, the Jimu Akotinipa. Now, I dear Zongo chiefs, the imams, now I hear any summer or Maka ever no citation. You know. It will go a long way to affect the campaign dynamics of 2024 elections. Now, some of the court citation, the error, Dr. Mamou Baumier's citation, the to the candidates, you know, the regional house of chiefs, the president of the regional house of chiefs, okay, or say Dr. Mamou Baumier and another bank worker for the candidates, you know. I hear some exceptional things in these seven years of good governance. Notable among them, and yet the way even though uh the fees are with you, or Timmy Boy and Manu Boy a boy and negotiating for peace within Ambunini and Dani uh among Untokwana Air Cosu Now Northern Region has seen a peaceful uh state. With the governance of Dr. Mamu Bamia and His Excellency Nana Abudankwa Ekufuado. Now, secondly, I didn't swap. And then he said, Oh, yeah, a blah, and then he said, No, even it was 2008, uh, former President John Ekufu time, and now Omu said, Tamale, in a sports stadium, Chitinchi Kakakapa. Now, any people should say, Major projects in Omu. And uh, uh, the party uh, among the uh, the northern region to say Tamale interchange. Ne, um, ni, any major interchange in the northern region, the new patriotic party, uh, through the leadership of His Excellency Nana Rudanko Kufado and uh, Dr. Mamou Bamia and the about. Secondly, Omasanso um, um, Tamale International Airport, Adia Nomu Hubita, LPP. His Excellency Nana Rudanko Kufado and uh, Dr. Mamou Bamia. And I'm not on one side. I can't say here. Now, thirdly, I don't show me to say, even apart from major stadiums, no, I'm going to say, Astro Tech, I'm going to see now, they provide jobs, they provide sporting opportunities. I'm not feeling good. I'm not doing that for me to say, no, party, you didn't check it. A party of pre-development, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Now, you go straight to the imams, the Zongo chiefs, I'm going to do it. Ah, a Sunday, a uh, straight mail into the campaign of former President John Dramani Mahama. I say, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya is a man who opens up to all, regardless of religious affiliation. Almost, almost the only other from say, or will be a Jew, be a rabbi too. They were, or you Muslim, but each and every time, only Christian community for almost from the first night. Easter celebrations, or celebrations, now he make sure that he's partake of it. Some even normal observe no more than a nipper or a bit a promoting the unity and in Kadoma Ghana will be enjoying for the numerous years. The Upper East Regional Council of Chief of Imams and Zongo Chiefs are praising flag by Dr. Mamou Baumia said, He's a man of compassion and openness to all. Now, the statement said, We, the coalition of Imams. And Zongo chiefs of the Upper East region do present you this citation of honor in recognition of your immeasurable and valuable contributions to us and the region at large. You have shown us over the years that you are indeed a man of action, one who delivers on his promises and is welcoming to everyone 
regardless of their political inclination, religious or tribal background. These qualities have added to the reasons why you are being the most effective and impactful vice president ever in the history of Ghana's politics. These qualities have added to the reasons why you are the most you are being the most effective and impactful vice president ever in the history of Ghana's politics. Statement from Upper Regional House of Chiefs, Coalition of and a regional council of Zongo chiefs and a chief imam statement really. the most impactful and the most competent and the most effective vice president ever in the history of Ghana's politics. Omdia Ahinchero Ashe Dr. Mahmoud Bamia. No, see, it suffices to say that you have brought recent recognition and intellectual discourse into Ghana's politics and that you have become a model for many in our Zogo communities for which your political contributions that far have made your name Dr. Mahmoud Bamia in deadly written in deadly written in our Zongos. It is Zongos now a strong base of the NDC. Not the original strong base of the NDC. A hope that Dr. Mahmoud Bami had a strong dent because regional House of Chiefs Zongo Chiefs, or maybe team youth for now, or more departed from the NDC, I got Dr. Mamu Bamiyechi. And I'm saying, no, or more the citation, and I'm the public declaration we ever come. Now, I settle every debate whatsoever. You could hear statements, some of the conversations, of course, so, during the meeting with the uh, regional House of Chiefs, Zongo Youth Connect, uh, Upper East Regional Chief Imams, and uh, Majority of the northern region uh, stakeholders on the Shia, Dr. Mahmoud Bamia, during the campaign visit. And if he had the money, he would not spend it on free senior high school education. Well, we disagreed with him. And we made sure, under the leadership of Nana Akofuado, that we implemented the free senior high school education. You will see that from independence in 1957 to 2016, from independence to 2016, almost 60 years, total number of students in senior high school was 800,000. After 60 years, 800,000. When we introduced free senior high school education, in seven years, we moved from 800,000 to 1.4 million students in senior high school. Just in seven years, we almost doubled what we started with for 60 years. And that tells you that there was a big problem and many people were not going to school. And now people have had the opportunity to go to school. But what is even more remarkable is that more girls are enrolling than boys in senior high school. And therefore we are closing the gender gap. In 2016, before the introduction of three SHS, for every 100 boys in senior high school, we had 68 girls. For every 100 girls, boys, we had 68 girls. At the end of last year, for every 100 boys, we have 106 girls in senior high school today. So the girls have overtaken the boys. And therefore, we have gender parity, pretty much. And that is good for the nation. It's good for the nation. The girls, in, those who live in the cities like Accra, can testify that these days in Accra it's difficult to find a maid because all the girls are in school. All the girls are in school and that is how it should be. So, and what is also very remarkable about the increase in senior high school enrollment is that the largest increase in senior high school enrollment is from the five northern regions. We lead in the enrollment the largest 
are in the five northern regions upper east upper west northern north east savannah we are the top five in enrollment and it makes sense because we are also some amongst the poorest of the regions and that is why we are catching up and we are sending our children to school in droves many of them will not have had uh, that education many of them but now we are able to send them to school uh, and therefore the five northern regions are topping and what is also more remarkable is that the students are performing better the top six subjects before in 2016 only 45 percent pass rate now is 64 percent pass rate from 45 percent to 64 percent and ghana is topping west africa the whole of the west african exams council the top three part prizes all went to ghanaian students and i'm very very proud of them and it is not because someone said they were cheating no they were working very hard and they have achieved a lot and we need to celebrate their achievement beyond the training we are giving students for free senior high school we are also training our youth in technical and vocational skills we have invested the most in technical voca and vocational education than any government in the history of ghana since independence over the last seven years we've spent six, six billion ghana cities on tvet education we are equipping our tvet schools building new tvet schools and making sure the 10 technical universities and the 13 technical colleges are fully equipped first class equipment that we have in our technical and vocational educational institutions and we have also brought free tvet education for the first time in our history no government has been able to do that and that has increased the number of students in tvet education from 60,000 to 159,000 now and that is really very remarkable and we are making sure our students are able to acquire skills and by the grace of god i want us to train our students to acquire and our population to our to acquire digital skills to prepare ourselves for the digital economy the jobs are going to be in the digital space and the countries that prepare the youth for the digital jobs are the countries that is going to work, benefit from the digital space with digitalization as it is you don't have to travel abroad to work abroad you can stay in Ghana and be working for an Australian company. You can be in Tempani and be working for a German company. You can be here and be working in the United States. Because you are doing work which doesn't require physical presence and you can do it online in digital space. And therefore, that is why I want us to train one million youth in digital skills coding software development software engineering let them acquire the skills and the good thing about the digital skills is that you don't need a certificate of any repute uh, or any uh, high to be able to do it all you need to do is that you are able to read and write if you can read and write we can train you to become a coder to become a software developer to become a software engineer in the process and so we have a goal a target of one million youth to train to, get, to make sure that they are able to in the, my vision also we need to help persons with disabilities to access tertiary education because even though they have disabilities it doesn't mean that they have inabilities they have got some of the sharpest minds we have and therefore i'm going to make sure that persons with disabilities will enjoy free tertiary education under my government they will all enjoy free tertiary education going forward i'm going to focus on agriculture agriculture is so key to our country we will make sure we have large-scale irrigated and technology-driven agriculture 
agriculture globally is now technology and so we are going to apply technology we have the land we have the water we now need to apply large technology on a large scale so that we have irrigation and this is why i am so keen and one of my highest priorities if i become president is to construct the kwalugu dam the kwalugu dam is going to be a very high priority for us and we are going to arrange the financing so that we can finance it it will give us 28,000 hectares to be able to farm that is massive for Ghana to feed Ghana and to feed West Africa but along the white volta we will irrigate and make sure that we we feed the world we have land in the north savannah northern region upper east upper west we have a lot of land let us use it let us be the bread basket for Ghana bread basket for Africa when you get up south the farm plains are there we can irrigate them as well and make sure that agriculture we focus on agriculture and and we create a lot of jobs in agriculture I'm also going to focus on bringing down the cost of electricity and how am I going to do so I'm going to move the generation of power from fuel to solar power we are going to move to solar power solar power has been given to us by god the sun is free of charge and we are going to rather than spend scarce foreign exchange importing fuel we will harness the solar power and make sure we add 2000 megawatts to the grid and that will reduce the cost of electricity by 50 percent and that is where we are going and therefore we'll make our industries more competitive they'll be able to recruit more people and that is where we are going with the power generation that we are going to have in our economy we want to bring in a whole new tax system that will help businesses the businesses are suffering right now from a lot of tax burdens we want to simplify it so that you have a flat tax system that everybody can calculate and do and then the import duty system is also going to be simplified and we are going to make sure right now there's a lot of smuggling that is taking place because people are coming through togo the new policy will be that ghana's import duty cannot be higher than that of togo once we do that nobody will smuggle through togo anymore we will have our goods come here and we'll get the revenue so we have so much that we want to do so many angles that i want to push to create jobs the creative arts economy is going to be a major growth pool under my government we have we are going to build on the whole issue of you know the return you know, the return to ghana and then beyond the return December in Ghana, all of these creative arts industry, we have to support our local musicians and all of that. And we can create a lot of jobs in the arts. We want to push sports as well. We want to push tourism. And these are all big areas of job creation. I believe that the best of Ghana is ahead of us. We have not seen anything. We are making progress. But I believe that Ghana can leapfrog many African countries and be a global competitor. We can do it. It is possible. It is possible. Let nobody tell us we cannot do it. We can do it. My brothers and sisters, I am running for president.